Hello, everyone. In this session, we are going to understand how methyl benzene, that is toluene, can be converted into an aldehyde, namely benzaldehyde. And we are using over here a very specific reagent, chromic oxide. If you want, you may specify it further as chromium 6 oxide. Okay, given by the formula CrO3. Okay, so chromium's charge, we take it as 6, oxygen being 2. You cross multiply this, you are bound to get a product that is Cr2O6, which can be simplified into this. So we are going to use chromium 6 oxide or CrO3. Okay. And this is a very simple reaction technically, but uh, many students get confused as to how reagents are moving within the reaction. So let's try to understand how using chromium oxide method can we convert toluene to aldehyde. Let's try to understand the basic structure of toluene. Toluene is methyl benzene, right? So you just have a CH3 group attached to benzene and you get toluene. Methyl benzene is an IUPAC name. Toluene is a common name. Okay. Now we get benzaldehyde out of this. So many people might say you just remove two hydrogens, substitute it with oxygen, and you are good to go. But no, it's not that simple. Rather, we use three types of agents over here. One is the reagent itself, chromium oxide. Another one over here that we are going to use is famously called as acetic anhydride. Now, how does acetic anhydride look like? It is basically CH3, C double bond O, CH3, C double bond O. Both these carbonyl carbons join with a single oxygen. This is how acetic anhydride looks like. So using both chromic acid as well as acetic anhydride, we are going to convert toluene to benzaldehyde. Okay, so this is not a one-step process. We require two steps. Let's try to understand each of the steps separately. First of all, we are considering over here CH3. So the best way to represent CH3, show the four bonds. Okay, one bonded to benzene ring three bonds of carbon bonded to hydrogens. What are we using over here? We are using chromium oxide, which is CrO3, right? CrO3. And along with this, we are using acetic anhydride. CH3, C double bond O. CH3, C double bond O. Both the carbonyl carbons bound to oxygen. Okay. So this is how our initial reagent as well as the main reactant looks like. Okay. Now what is going to happen is the first case. The first case that is going to happen over here is this entire reactant is going to turn into something like this. CH O C double bond O, CH3, twice. We also call this as benzyldene diacetate. Let's try to understand how we are getting this intermediate. Because this does not look like benzaldehyde, so it's not our main product, it's an intermediate. What is actually happening over here? Let's try to decode it. So here what happens, first of all, we are going to split this. Acetic anhydride in 99.9% .9 cases splits into two compounds. CH3, C double bond O, O. Another one is CH3, C double bond O and nothing else. Okay, so this is how the splitting looks like of acetic anhydride. 
Now let's understand and understand it further. Okay, we have got one oxygen over here. This one oxygen goes to the carbonyl carbon over here and we find acetate. Please mind you that acetic acid looks like CH3C double bond O, OH. This is acetic acid. If suppose we remove the hydrogen, if suppose we remove the hydrogen and substitute it with sodium, we call it famously as sodium acetate, right? And what if we don't include sodium at all? We leave it at C double bond OO. Then it is called as acetate. What is this? This is nothing but acetate. So if you see, if we take one oxygen from chromic oxide, we are finding another acetate. So here there are two acetates being formed. Acetate number one, acetate number two. Now what happens next? The next thing that happens is the hydrogens over here. Okay. So the two hydrogens over here, both would be released. And another oxygen from chromic oxide is going to accommodate. And we are forming what? H2O. Try to understand what are we narrowing down to. We have got three reactants. One is toluene, another one is chromic oxide, and the third one is acetic anhydride. We are trying to break them down in such a way that we can form some product out of it. Okay, so how do we form the product out of it? First of all, you need to remember that when acetic anhydride breaks, 99% times it breaks as CH3C double bond OO and another one would be CH3C double bond O, meaning one of the acetic group takes up the shared oxygen. From chromium oxide, from here, chromium oxide, we take one oxygen and we put it in this particular uh, semi-compound which was formed out of acetic acid. So now if you see, we have two acetates over here. The term diacetate that is coming is because of the two acetates present over here. Now what? Now we go to this carbon. Okay. So this carbon over here basically is going to eliminate two hydrogens. Now one might ask, why are the two hydrogens being eliminated? Let's try to understand what's the logic behind them. These two acetate groups have a negative charge on them. We agree. These two acetate groups have negative charge on them. Carbon has three hydrogens. But... When this negatively charged oxygen approaches carbon, carbon finds it to be more electronegative and a better companion. So hence, carbon would try to remove two hydrogens to accommodate the two oxygens with their uh, attached groups. Okay, so this particular compound actually looks something like this, benzylidine uh, diacetate only, but in some this manner. See, one O, C double bond O, CH3 group comes over here and attaches. So one acetate group comes over here. And the second acetate group comes over here and attaches like this. So if you can see over here, the compound that we had written primarily, that is benzene ring, CH, O, C double bond O, CH3 twice is nothing but represented as this man. Okay. So what is happening? Let's try to understand step by step. Your acetic acid broke down and you are getting diacetates out of it. That is two acetates out of it using chromium's oxygen. Okay. Now, carbon sees that there are two highly electronegative oxygen present. And it does not want to miss the opportunity to bind with such strong oxygens. So it removes the two hydrogens from its bonding. The two hydrogens along with the oxygen from the chromic oxide are going to form water. Now the two acetate groups migrate to carbon and they are going to attach to it. Forming a specific intermediate that is 
benzylidine acetate okay now one might say what is remaining out of chromic oxide we are left with only cro so what is cro cro is also chromic oxide cro is also chromic oxide where chromium state is 2 oxygen state is also 2 so when you cross multiply you are going to get cr2o2 or if you simplify you get cro so cro is nothing but chromium 2 oxide okay now since benzylidine acetate is a intermediate we are not worrying about the byproduct so many a times even in the reaction they might not uh, show you water as a byproduct of this first step they might not show you show you chromium 2 oxide as a byproduct of this process but you need to understand how this reaction is functioning what is making this benzylidine acetate come into picture this is step number one. So we have completed our step number one. What is step number two? Step number two is we have got our benzylidine acetate. Correct? Let's write down our benzylidine acetate, how it looks like. It looks like CH O C double bond O C H3 O C double bond O C H3. This is our benzylidine acetate, right? This is our benzylidine acetate. Now, this intermediate is treated with protonated water. Protonated water means what? Generally, we write water as H2O. In protonated water, our hydrogen amount, that is, the protonation actually increases. How is that possible? Only if you put your water in an acidic medium. Whenever water is present in a medium where there is surplus amount of protons present, we get protonated water. Normal water looks like this, right? And add lone pair of electrons on oxygen. Whenever we put water in acidic medium, the lone pair of electron over uh, oxygen disappears and is replaced by another hydrogen. So, because oxygen has got surplus of protons over here, it becomes protonated and we call this water to be protonated water, H3O, where oxygen's lone pair of electron are replaced by a bond with hydrogen. Okay, now when we treat this particular uh, benzylidine diacetate with protonated water, let's try to understand what is happening. Okay, so I write protonated water in this, this format itself so you can understand. Okay, we have H, O, H and H and we have a plus charge over here. Okay, so what happens here? Let's understand. Now, if you see over here, this is one acetate group. This is another acetate group. If we add one hydrogen to the acetate group, let's try to see what is happening. This is our acetate, CH3C double bond O. O. And another acetate is this way, CH3C double bond O, O. If we add one hydrogen each, if we add one hydrogen each to these acetates, what is going to happen? One hydrogen comes on this side, another hydrogen comes on this side. You are forming nothing but acetic acid. So, when you want to remove this particular diacetate, what you are going to do? You are just going to provide benzylidine diacetate with hydrogens. One hydrogen each will bind to the acetate group and you are going to get resultant two acetic acids. A good byproduct to be honest. Now, what happens? What is left? You have your benzene ring. You have your carbon, hydrogen. The two acetates have left and become acetic acid. 
Now this is left. This OH is left. Correct? This OH comes and bonds over here. Correct? This OH comes and bonds over here. Everything seems fine. You might even call it as an alcohol. But we need to know one important concept. Carbon requires three bonds. No, carbon requires four bonds. But over here, Bichara carbon has only three bonds with it. What has happened? Carbon has a cationic structure over here. Yes or no? Carbon has a cationic structure. Or we can say this has become a carbocation. Carbon needs four bonds. It has got only three bonds. What it does, it develops a plus charge. It wants another bond to be present. For this reason, what is going to happen? Carbon shifts its plus charge on hydrogen and eliminates it out of the compound. Oxygen takes this bond and forms a double bond with carbon. What is happening? Let's try to understand. Carbon's positive charge, that is carbocationic positive charge, is handed over to hydrogen and hydrogen leaves the compound. Okay, so again we develop an acidic medium. The regeneration of an acidated or protonated medium is regenerated. Now let's see over here, the OH had a bond over here. This bond shifts. Okay, this bond shifts. And now you have got four bonded carbon. Okay, so when you have this particular structure ready, that is when you call it as a benzidehyde. Looks so simple, right? Looks so simple. You directly write down toluene in presence of chromic acid, acetic anhydride, protonated water, you get benzidehyde. But there's a lot which goes under in formation of that product. In this series that we are dealing with, my major aim is for you to understand how these reactions are happening. Okay, probably these videos might be a bit lengthy because I'm explaining these reactions in detail. You might prefer watching these on 2x if you originally know or you have read this reaction somewhere and you're just here for an explanation. With this, we convert toluene to aldehyde using chromic acid. I hope you have understood the method. Signing off. Bye.